and welcome. In this video, we're going to be discussing how to create a journey query. The journey tool allows you to discover the paths users most frequently take through your product. You can analyze the paths customers take after a specific event, find the common paths users take towards conversion, and learn how at-risk users flow through your product to prioritize product improvement. In today's example, we're going to be using data from a fictional subscription box company that specializes in pet products. It's called Petbox. The data in this demo is for example purposes only. To begin, the first thing we need to do is access the tool. It can be found in the top left under this Analyze drop-down tab. So as I click Analyze, I'll just select Journeys from the list. And then I like to start every query I build with an indicative by first asking a question of the data. And in this case, I'm curious, where do users go after opening a marketing email? To begin, I need to first select an event that's going to serve as the starting point for all of our users' journeys. So I'll click where it says select an event, and to go about answering that question of where they go after opening an email, it makes sense that the initial event would be opening an email. So in this data set, it's labeled as email opened, so I can search or scroll for that find it from the list. And then if I want to get even more granular and specific with my search results, as I hover my cursor over that event that I selected, you'll see I get this filter where option. If I click there, I'll get a list of event properties that I can then use to filter my results. So if I want to look specifically at where customers are going after opening just one specific email, what I can do is find email subject from the list, and then I need to decide is it equal to the email that I'm selecting, not equal to, contains, does not contain, so on. In this case, I'm just gonna be looking at, is it equal to the specific email? So in this case, why don't we look at where users go after opening the email titled, five reasons to adopt a kitty. I always need to give indicative a date range. So where it says last seven days on the left-hand side, I get one, seven, and 30 days as options out of the box, but you can actually create a custom date range as well in this case, why don't we expand it out to look at the last 30 days, and we'll go ahead and run the query. Now, as we look at this, we can see each one of these different color-coded pathways represents a group of users moving together to the next step. So we've got the top five up here in green, purple, light blue, yellow, and blue. We also have a gray and a darker gray option towards the bottom. Gray, or the light gray, is going to represent all of the events that did not meet the required threshold to be counted in this query. So what that means is in the top right we can see we're hiding steps under 5%. So if an event doesn't get at least 5% of the users to participate in it, it will be collapsed into that other events option or event category. All the way on the bottom too, we have drop off. So any users that open the email and then just left the platform, every step of the way, they're going to be represented here in this user drop off category. Now, if you'll notice along the top, we have some repeated steps here. So email opened, email opened, email opened, even four times email opened. Now it is very likely that you'll have users who open the email repeatedly before acting on it. But ultimately what we want to see is where they're going after they decide to act on that email. So why don't we merge those steps together? And we can do that by clicking into this merge repeated steps box, and then we'll just simply turn it on. Now additionally, I'm going to lower my threshold. So it's currently preset to 5%, but we can raise it all the way up to 20% and lower it down to a half a percent. In this case, I'll lower it down to just 1%. And then in the top right here too, this current query is just showing us the first five steps of the user journey. If you want to expand out past that, where it says five steps, if you click in there, you can expand it all the way out to 15 steps. In this case, why don't we look at the first eight? So now as we start looking at these results, we can see maybe towards the bottom right here, we're getting a lot of events that are only capturing 4% of the users. And as I scroll down further through the customer journey, uh, we're seeing that we're even getting events with just two and in some cases even 1% of the users to participate. Now there's a few different things we can do to expand on certain events here that we're looking at. So if I find an event that's interesting and I wanna key in specifically on this conversion event here in orange in the fourth category over, if I click into that, I have a few different options. So I can expand the event based off of an event property that I select. We can exclude the event from the entire query. We can actually also build a cohort or a funnel analysis 
off of this. So I'll show you quickly how to create a funnel analysis is I click into analyze funnel. It's essentially going to ask me to work backwards where I think we're all used to creating a funnel by looking at the first step first. In this case, we're starting from the end of our funnel and working back towards the beginning. So I'll select the events that make the most sense to the funnel that I'm trying to build. So if we end on this conversion event, this purchase product, maybe we wanna track and see the users who are coming from viewing the pet cam after viewing the blog. So this will create a funnel that goes from opening an email to viewing the blog to connecting to the pet cam and then finally purchasing a product. As soon as I click that final event, it's going to automatically create the funnel for me. Now to quickly get back to the journey, if you look in the top left of this funnel, you'll get a green link that you can click and it will direct you back to the journey query that you built earlier. For now, happy analyzing.